Good morning, church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Regina Harrison from Woodbine First United Methodist Church. Welcome to our online worship service this morning. If you are visiting with us, we hope that you will join us again. Will you join me in our call to worship? Come, all ye people, come and worship. God has made a new covenant with us. Come, all creatures of the earth, come and worship. God has made a covenant with all creatures. Remember the covenant and be thankful. God remembers the covenant and God will save us. Amen. Will you join me in our opening prayer? God of the covenant, you are ever faithful. Your love never ends. Teach us your ways and guide us in your paths that we may witness to your grace and salvation. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Genesis chapter 7, 8, and 9, and I will be reading selected verses. Most of you have heard the story of Noah and the ark. You learned about it in Sunday school. Your teacher may have even had a felt board with cutouts of Noah and his family and the animals. So it's a fairly familiar story for most of us. The story of Noah takes place in chapters 6 through 9 of Genesis. And I'm just going to summarize a little bit here. God looked out on a corrupt world full of wickedness and evil. And he was sorry that he had made humankind. But Noah walked with God. He was a righteous man, blameless. Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. God told Noah that he was going to destroy the earth, that it would rain for 40 days and nights, and that Noah would need to build an ark for him and his family and these animals to survive the floods. God gave Noah instructions to build the ark to very specific measurements. When the rains came, he was to take his wife his sons and his sons' wives, two of every living creature, male and female, and get into the ark. I will begin reading Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And on the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and, in and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep which in our terms is 270 feet. And all flesh died that moved on the face of the earth, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all human beings, everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark and the waters swelled on the earth for 150 days. 
But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained and the waters gradually recede from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to abate until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him in the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand, and he took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, and every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal, and every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind, for the inclination inclination of the human heart is evil from youth, nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Then God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and that shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on this earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Most of us have faced trials in life, and some of us have faced many trials in life. Many storms of family, problems, divorce, health issues, job situations, church problems, and so on. We all face storms in life. But what I have found in the storms and trials that I have faced is that God is always faithful. I may not have understood what God was doing, how he was working in my life at the time, but I know that God's faithfulness in the past gives me assurance that I can trust God now and in the future. These experiences are the foundation of my faith because I cannot deny that God exists and that God loves me because of what I learned about God during those experiences. My faith has grown because I know that God was and is always faithful. Right now, we are, we are all at different degrees of suffering. Along with all the other things that happen in life, the anxiety and the uncertainty of the coronavirus and how it may affect us and those we love is constantly with us. The isolation is unbearable at times. We wonder when we will ever be able to be together to worship in our sanctuary again. We wonder when we will be able to have a meal with friends or family. And we can't imagine what the future is going to look like post-coronavirus pandemic. In the story of Noah and the flood, God was preparing Noah and his family for the loss of their familiar way of life. Paradise would never be the same again. Friends, we will never go back to the way things were with what was familiar. We will not be the same when we get to the other side of this storm. It is okay to grieve the loss of our ideal, to lament that which we have lost as individuals and as a society. The many people we've lost to COVID-19, our children and the loss of their educational opportunities and activities, prom, graduation, simply hanging out with their friends. Grandparents are missing loving on their grandchildren. Small businesses are closing. Our financial outlook is dim. And we wonder if our society can rebound from this crisis. It is a lot for us to handle. But be encouraged. We find ourselves in unfamiliar place right now, but we will begin anew. We will find our new normal, just as Noah and his family did. It wasn't till the end of the journey that Noah and his family could get out of the ark. But they didn't get out until God said it was okay, get out of the ark. We can imagine how anxious they were to get out of that boat. All that time cooped up together with the family and all those animals, I imagine they were anxious for a breath of fresh air. And I imagine the animals were anxious to be free as well. They were all ready to get out of that boat and get on with their lives. To tackle what was on the other side. When the storm was over and Noah and his family and all the animals stepped out of the ark, they stepped out into a brand new world. We don't know where their journey took them, but we do know that where they started out is not where they ended up. It was a new beginning, 
a journey to a new normal. We hear a lot about that our day, in our days right now, the new normal. We can't help but to see the parallels with our current situation and what Noah and his family faced. We are indeed in a storm. And I must say that I don't believe for a second that God caused this storm, this pandemic. But God can certainly use it for our good and for God's glory. God has closed the door on many of our routines. We don't know why, but we know that we have to trust God enough to leave that door closed until he says we can get out. We need to be patient. We need to wait, which is not easy for any of us. Noah and his family were on that ark a lot longer than 40 days. It was most likely more than a year. That's a really long time to be cooped up in an ark. They waited, and after the flood, they waited some more. When the ark finally came to rest on Mount Ararat, they still waited. Noah sent out a raven. They waited. Then he sent out a dove, and they waited. And the waters receded, but still they waited for the ground to dry. And then they waited until God said they could get out of the ark. In the height of the storm, in Genesis 8, 1, God says, but God, Genesis 8, 1 says, but God remembered Noah. After the storm, after the 40 days of rain and the floods that swelled for 150 days, God remembered. Noah trusted God and God got them through the storm. And after they left the ark, Noah built an altar where he made a burnt offering in thanks and praise to God for being with them and bringing them through the storm. When we're facing something, we pray. And generally, when we're in the midst of something, a storm of some sort, we pray. But after it's all over, we often just move on. Praise God in the midst of the storm and don't forget to thank God and praise God when you are safely, when we are safely on the other side. God made a promise to Noah that there would never be another storm like that again. God blessed Noah and his family and made a covenant with them that there would be there never would be a flood to destroy the earth again. God gave a sign of his covenant with them and with all the earth, the rainbow. God said to Noah, when I see the bow in the clouds, I will remember the covenant that I made with you and every living creature. The sign of God's covenant is made of the same elements that caused the storm. The elements that annihilated the earth with floods, out of those same elements came God's promise in the form of a rainbow. But God's promise was only revealed after they persevered through the storm. The storm couldn't be stopped, but it could be survived. Surviving the storm begins with faith and trust that God has you right where you need to be. In Romans 5, Paul tells us to rejoice in our suffering. Rejoice in our suffering? But Paul goes on to explain, suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. So what he's really saying is rejoice in hope. And this is how you do it. You keep going 
You push through the trials and the adversity. The trials you face build character. And the character you gain from, the, from adversity brings hope because you made it through the suffering. You have hope. One good thing about being in my 50s is that I get that so much more than when I was in my 30s because I've experienced God's faithfulness time and time again throughout my life. God established a covenant with us. The rainbow is, it's in itself isn't anything spectacular or supernatural, except that God uses everyday elements that produce the rainbow to explain a supernatural promise. Likewise, the bread and cup, ordinary elements, grain, juice from grapes, not supernatural in themselves, but our Lord and Savior transformed them into something supernatural so that we could understand his love, his faithfulness, and his willingness to die on the cross for our sins. Because of the cross, Jesus understands suffering, and he is with us in our suffering. In Matthew 26, we find Jesus and the disciples in the upper room. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the redemptive power of Christ at work in our lives. God uses these everyday elements to explain something supernatural to us that does something supernatural within us. A sign for us of the new covenant. Be encouraged. God will bring us through the storm. <clears throat> Excuse me and continue to be with us along the journey to our new normal. We serve a God of new beginnings. God takes what we have to offer and whatever we are going through and weaves a path out of suffering and into a new beginning. When this pandemic is over, I hope and pray that we let go of the fear that held us and focus on the many blessings that have come and will continue to come out of this storm. This is what I know. God has not forgotten you or me. God is with us through the storms, always. God uses ordinary, everyday elements to establish supernatural signs, and God uses ordinary people in extraordinary ways to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. As the days and weeks of the coronavirus continue, God is with us. As we shelter in our homes, God is with us. Through the fear and uncertainty of our current times, God is with us. God is working a new thing in us, a new beginning for all of us. Be encouraged. Amen. In our joys and concerns today, first I want to ask you, where have you seen God at work this week? Think about that. And as we go to prayer shortly, Thank God for those joys in your life. In our concerns, we want to remember Gail Walker, who is in the hospital in Omaha and needs our prayers for healing. 
There are many that need our prayers for healing. My family members, I'm sure you have family and friends that need prayers for all sorts of things. There are myriad reasons why we all need prayer. Before we go into prayer, I would like us to spend a few moments in silent prayer. I will pray, then I will have a prayer of dedication for our tithes and offerings, and then we will follow that with the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. When we doubt, you give us confidence to trust you. When we are afraid, you comfort us. When it seems like the storms are overtaking us, you give us your peace. God of constancy, we give thanks for your covenant with us, shown forth in the rainbow of hope. We hold fast to your promise of strength and power and wisdom, the promise that you always go before us and will never abandon us. You supply our every need and equip us in ministry to which you have called us. We confess that we have not loved you and our neighbor as we have loved ourselves. Thank you for your promise to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, hear the prayers of our hearts. We have many blessings for which to be thankful, and we are, Lord, but we also have many concerns. We know that you hear our prayers, Lord, and we ask for your presence to be with those who are suffering with poor health. We boldly ask for your divine healing of mind, body, and soul. As the coronavirus continues to our help, affect our health and our financial situation, we ask for your divine guidance and the strength to persevere. Be with those who are unable to provide for their family's basic needs of food and other necessities. Help us as a church and as a community to freely give of ourselves and our resources to reach out and lend a helping hand to someone in need. Lord, you know how much we want to be together <clears throat> to worship in our sanctuary and to fellowship with friends and family. But we know that we need to wait until it is safe to be out. Give us patience. It has been so long. And we pray that the end will soon be in sight. So we wait. And we hope. And we trust that you are working all things for our good. From the abundant blessings you have given us we bring our offerings to you. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, and may they be used in the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temp temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have included lyrics to a hymn called The Rainbow. The tune is to Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken by Franz Joseph Haydn. I do not know who the lyrics are by. It is unknown. So we have that 
him the rainbow, which is very appropriate for what we're talking about today. The second hymn that I've given you lyrics for is Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is also very appropriate to our message today, that God is always faithful. There are two videos that have the, the song, the, the piano music for these hymns, so you can sing them now or whenever you would like to. So just always remember, God is faithful, and that covenant that God made with us, the sun is the rainbow. Now, my friends, receive this benediction. Dwell under the rainbow of God's love and promises. Proclaim the good news that our God is a God of new beginnings and second chances. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, may you know the great love that God has for you and that you may, may you persevere in faith and hope. Amen. Thank you for joining us, joining us this morning. I hope you have a wonderful week.